St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the former pastor of St. Gabriel's Parish here in Toronto, Passionist Father Paul Cusack. Okay. Good morning, good people. The television of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous owner from Toronto. This Mass is offered for thanksgivings received and for God's continuous blessings on their family in the year 2015 and in the years to come. Also in thanksgiving to all the sponsors of this televised Mass and for the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. The daily televised Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking you for this gift. So we continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll prepare ourselves for celebrating our Mass by being mindful of God's goodness and God's graciousness to each of us. Mindful, too, of the times in our own lives when we fail to respond to that goodness and graciousness. And so we ask again for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. And we ask you this through Christ the Lord. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The ungodly reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base, and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true, and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's child, he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture so that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for, according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hoped for the wages of holiness, nor discerned the prize for blameless souls. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went about in Galilee. He did not wish to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders were looking for an opportunity to kill him. Now, the Jewish feast, the festival of booths was near. But after his brothers had gone to the festival, then he also went, not publicly, but as it were, in secret. Now, some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, is not this the man whom the authorities are trying to kill? And here he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that he is the Messiah. Yet we know where this man is from. But when the Messiah comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he was teaching in the temple, You know me, and you know where I am from. I have not come on my own, but the one who sent me is true and you do not know him. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. Then they tried to arrest Jesus, but no one lay hands on him because his hour had not yet come. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Our short gospel tells us that Jesus went by himself to Jerusalem for the festival of the booths. This is an eight-day celebration in thanksgiving for a fall harvest. It would be a busy time in the city, especially in the temple area, where special sacrifices would be offered. I've met different people at different times who just came back from a pilgrimage to one of the church's famous shrines, either here or over in Europe. And one of the things they found distressing with the whole, was the, with the whole trip was the commercialism at these sacred places. It was something they, they didn't expect, and it took something away from the whole experience. Things really haven't changed. One of the critical moments in the ministry of Jesus was when he cleared the temple of the money changers and the merchants. He was angry because they made his father's house, which was a house of prayer, into a commercial market. And he threw them out. And for the religious leaders, this was the last straw. Jesus had to go. Our first reading is from the Book of Wisdom. It was written a couple of hundred years before the time of Jesus. But it seems to be reading the minds of those who plotted the death of Jesus. He became to us the reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. When Jesus stood before Pilate, he said that he had come to bear witness to the truth, the truth of God's love for each one of us, the truth of the worth and the dignity of every human being. Each one of us in our own life circumstances is called to imitate that integrity of Jesus, to bear witness to the truth of the worth and the dignity of every person. And we do that when we find ourselves bold enough to say something, when we hear men and women belittle others by bigoted or sexist or racist remarks. It could be at a good, uh, uh, a bridge party or a coffee clatch or a cocktail party or in a golf course. On that occasion, we have to ask ourselves, are we strong enough, bold enough, to challenge those who belittle the dignity of our brothers and sisters in Christ? Jesus died on the cross for each one of us. Every person who comes into our lives is as precious to him as we are. And so we continue this Mass praying that God give us the strength to defend the rights and the dignity of all our brothers and sisters and say no, no to bigotry, racism, and sexism. And like Jesus, be willing to face the consequences. And may the Lord bless us and give us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now place before our loving God our needs and our intentions. We pray for our Holy Father and for his brother bishops. 
We pray for religious leaders of all faiths and all denominations, that God's Spirit be with them to enlighten them, strengthen them, and guide them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice throughout the world, and for God's blessings on those who work to bring peace and justice to this troubled world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the homeless, the depressed, and the oppressed, and all people who suffer in our times of, of prosperity, who have nothing of their own, for these good people, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we make our petitions known to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, for he is Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, who did the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by His mighty power and lead us to approach His source with ever greater purity. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as a rather hold of the things that etern eternally endure. And so although all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray now with confidence to the Father using the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We greet one another with the greeting of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by St. Augustine? God of our life, there are days when the burdens we carry chafe our shoulders and weigh us down. When the road seems weary and endless, the skies gray and threatening, when our lives have no music in them, our hearts are lonely, and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Tune our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of comradeship with heroes and saints of every age. And so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on this road to life. To your honor and glory. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind. We ask you this through Christ the Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick. And your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.